Thank you for joining. In this lesson, we will continue practicing crowds. We will see how endpoints are chosen to be triggered in Netcore 7. This lesson marks the end of the routing section. In the next lesson, we will begin learning about controllers in Netcore 7. A few lessons ago, I talked about how in Netcore 7 endpoints are chosen using the best route selection. So, what exactly does best route selection mean? First, in ASP Netcore 7, the sequence of endpoint selection is not guaranteed. There is a matching pattern, but due to your code, certain effects can occur. So, a complete 100% match might not always occur. Then, all available matches are handled together. Imagine having 10 endpoints. All of them are checked simultaneously. After that, Netcore 7 usually takes care of route selections on its own, but developers can adjust the order. We will discuss how to adjust selection priorities in upcoming lessons. Weight refers to the priority of route selection. It's a way to explicitly set the order in which endpoints are executed or evaluated. The process of matching URLs happens in the following order. The received URL path is compared to the available endpoints and their route templates. All possible matches are collected. From the list of matches, any that don't meet the route constraints are removed. Then the list goes through another check, where matches that don't pass a set of matcher policy rules are removed. Matcher policy is a class in Netcore 7 that helps rearrange endpoints priorities. This class filters endpoints by their path or method arranges endpoints by their priority or weight, enforces special conditions on endpoints. Next comes the endpoint selector. It's the last step and chooses the best option from the previous list using highest priority. If there are multiple matches with the same importance as the best one, then the ambiguous match exception is thrown. The list of endpoints is prioritized according to the route endpoint order which is an integer value that determines the order in which endpoints are evaluated. Lower values are evaluated first, so to get to the highest priority at the final decision to select. And router endpoint order will be discussed with future lessons. The route template precedence is a system that assigns each route template a value based on how specific it is and follows below rules. Templates with more segments are considered more specific. A segment with literal text is considered more specific than a parameter segment. A parameter segment with a constraint is considered more specific than one without. A complex segment is considered as specific as a parameter segment with a constraint. Catch-all parameters are the least specific. And these route examples are exactly what we have talked about. You can take a screenshot of the slide to remember for later. I won't cover it again, but let's move on to practicing with routes. We will see how they get chosen and matched. I'll create a few copies of the endpoints we made earlier and modify them for the first example with two and three parameters in the URLs. I'll name these parameters A and B for the first URL and A, B and C for the second one. This way it will be easier to understand. So when we use the URL A and B, the URL A, B, C won't activate it because A, B and C is more specific with three parameters. Similarly, if we trigger the endpoint ABC, the A and B endpoint won't be activated. This makes it clear for the server to distinguish between these two endpoints. In the next example, for the C parameter, I will apply a constraint using the int type. The first AB endpoint will stay the same. Now, if I access the URL with the third parameter being an integer, the server's response will be accurate. But if I replace the integer with a letter, the run method will be triggered because there is no matching endpoint for this situation. And of course, using the AB URL will give the correct response again. In this next example, I will use a parameterized URL. I will add a parameter to the second URL. If we use the URL with A and B, the endpoint from the first URL will be activated. But if we use any other characters, the endpoint from the second URL will be executed. If I modify it so that the endpoint logic involves a query, we will receive the correct response from the AC endpoint. And the final example using a catch-all with an asterisk. Both the AB and AC catch-all examples are triggered correctly. The catch-all parameter captures any value it receives. And as always, lesson assignments. At the conclusion of each lesson, I highly encourage you to complete the assignments as they will greatly contribute to your progress in ASP.NET Core 7. 
By consistently practicing, you will see faster results in your learning journey. And the assignments answers you can download from the GitHub. The link is below. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions or need further assistance, feel free to comment below. Don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe to our channel for more great coding content. Stay updated with the latest video by ringing the notification bell. Happy coding!